Going out live, Leon? No, it's not going out live. That's all right. If I had a terror deck, he's got it. Do you? Maybe that's why the Boschman machine is good. Yeah. I've just been doing your tune, going up and interviewing random people, including some of his students. Yeah. So, as I'm just about to slip out. No, it's been great. <laughs> it's been highly informative for the kids, and I think it's given a lot of them a chance to um, kind of see what's out there and network a bit and actually build interests and ideas for what they'd like to do after they leave school. Yeah. Someone used a great term before human API. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was just a like API is like an applications program interface which okay. uses software yeah. to try and like if you wanted to connect to your Facebook account or something else, right. use an API. An idea of a human API if someone connects other people together. Yeah. I just thought it was such a great idea. I think they had another great one over there on the remembrance table about remembering and they were asking, Well what what is remembrance? And it started with what is yeah. remembrance day and then it went into how would you change remembering things in the future and uh, how we work in remembering and forgetting things. Yeah. So I think it's been it's been a great little um, it's been a great social project and pilot for them as well. Well, these are the kind of things that happen on like, you know, when they collapse a curriculum for a day. Mm. These are the type of things sometimes happen in there, but really, these are the type of things which need to happen a lot more. I think places like, which we're certainly be uh, aware of, mm. near me in Northumberland, Carnton Learning Village, do these kind of things right. a lot more than I think than other schools. And I think it's it's a really nice way of getting cross-curricular stuff going on. And I think for ICT, um, as, as far as, I mean, that coding table there, I think it's rewired, it's cool, would be really amazing to have in the school because it teaches the kids things like coding. A lot of them are interested in ICT, but they never get past the Microsoft Excel, yeah. just the whole Windows thing. So getting them into actually coding, thinking about what they would do if they had to make a web page or make an app is it's just great because I mean that's that's Mark Zuckerberg that's how yeah. Facebook came about so I think there's, there's a real connection between the one you just mentioned so over there there's a paper proto- prototyping thing going on mm. which anyone can do yeah. and then this one here is Hackersaurus which is a Mozilla project where you can see like behind the code behind websites right. and I think structuring like that is a really nice way of getting yeah. anyone interested yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for this to expand and it would be it'd be fun and it'd be nice to engage with the students like that and know that you're not just teaching them something to pass an exam but you're also giving them a skill or something they could use to further themselves in life. I think it's, um, I mean, sometimes I, I'm, I, I started off being a teacher's assistant and I'm still working there. I'm studying to actually be a doctor, but as far as I teach at the school now that I went to, yeah. and um, I think it's important that, it's, that there's a, there's an, there's a environment of learning or just a desire to learn whether it's because sometimes the kids do teach you things and sometimes you do end up learning stuff from them or they learn stuff from you so I, I don't think there should be a fear of expertise or whether I know more or they know more because they may bring something to you which you could in you turn <laughs> do something you're, you're nodding your head why yeah. <laughs> I agree with you you agree with me okay. <laughs> I think I display that right I display that trait in the classroom the, the, yeah, 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 these, yeah. These, these guys are fantastic. So what do you think about it? What do you think about it? I said, the teachers might be worried about their lack of expertise in teaching you. What, um, you know, what do you think about that? Do you think yes, that? sometimes in class there's, there's quite a few teachers who teach the class using books only, not their own knowledge. So some might think that they can learn from the books, they don't need teachers, and just miss the subject, go home, revise. So sometimes you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, what do, you think, what do you think of the, um, the whole thing? Oh, it's great actually. I like what they're doing. I mean, do you have anything like this at school? Uh, not, not at all. 
I mean, would you like to have any any, any sort of activities? I'll, 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 I'll like that. Yeah. Where you where you bring in experts and you work together and yeah, I'll, have people plug in to different things. I would like that very much. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you think what, what, what attracts you to it? Um, the software that they use, the computers, that they use, how they do it, and everything. I just I like playing on computers myself, and hacking and all that. I like doing everything. So you're gonna you're gonna have it sit down and do some hacker service things, this afternoon? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can you tell me what's happening here at the uh, Mozilla Festival in London? Hello, uh, you found yourself at the Hive Chicago table where we are exploring freedom, visions of freedom. Okay, what does that entail? What are you doing? So it's a uh, kind of a multi, uh, multi, what do you say, uh, phase workshop table. We've got a, um, a query table with cards where questions are asked and then we have uh, a maker table behind you where people are um, playing with their projects and then we have an interview station here where young people and participants are uh, explaining what freedom means to them. And then we're posting everything up on a live Tumblr. Oh right, so it goes straight onto Tumblr. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Can I ask you what you two guys are doing? So, I'm a... Uh, I've been going around shooting interviews with the kids, uh, represent U Media, uh, Digital Youth Network here, and uh, really just trying to engage the, the young people in what they think freedom is and what it isn't, what is oppressing their freedoms as well. Uh, so we've been having some really cool dialogues back and forth, and again, that's kind of shot right back onto the blog here. Oh, yeah, Straight sorry, in. I think I was telling you as you were... Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you've obviously got a better connection than I have. I'm having problems. <laughs> That's really cool. It's great stuff. What do you think about the model? The model of bringing lots of people together with different disciplines, different expertises, mixing them all up. It seems to me it's a bit like um, social hacking rather than anything to do with uh, right. the stuff. Right. I think it's a remix of the hacker, so to speak, because yeah. yeah. when we at least my stereotype of the hacker was somebody that just is a loner, they're in front of their computer. Uh, but to see it as this collaborative, uh, you know, really fruitful kind of thing that is here to inform, to shift society in a sense, uh, I think, you know, this type of fest is the roots of that. You know, it also fosters creativity. You know, so just as Brother Mike was saying, you know, we have an opportunity to bring a lot of people, uh, a lot of diverse perspectives to be more creative and use creative tools to be able to express ourselves. You know, the concept is about freedom and uh, for many people, freedom is really the web, an open web, an open opportunities to make a, a statement, make a difference, connect with others with shared interests. And that's happening right here at MozFest. Yeah, it's a level playing field for everyone. For Absolutely. Everyone. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Revolution. Man. <laughs> so I'm with the Bay Area, or we're with the Bay Area Video <laughs> Coalition, yeah. and uh, we work with the youth program called The Factory. And um, so basically, The Factory is an after school program for youth. Um, and we make films, and so we edit, write, and direct our own films and everything. Yeah, I, I saw some of it. I saw. Um some of the films that were to do with the, the drafting and the Show me a film full of Facebook list. selling over um, <laughs> the list, yeah. The lists, yeah. And yeah. 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 That was done before I joined. So. Uh, yeah, that was last summer. Um, so I, I think I worked on that project actually. Um, and then this summer, we did the same thing. We worked with community organizations to make films. But uh, Mozilla, we worked with them to make them web native. So the idea is that um, these videos aren't just regular videos, that they're interactive and engaging, and that they're plugged into the web so that as you're watching it, something from the web will come up and it'll, it shapes our films and makes them a lot more engaging and it helps them grow a little bit too. Um, and it, it also aligns with like the philosophy behind like the documentaries that we yes. make, which are all about social justice and getting people involved with the nonprofit specifically. Um, but of course, that doesn't really work if it's just a film and you're just passively watching it. So incorporating web native, um, web native elements into our films is like really encouraging people to really get involved and to really, you know, get up off their chair, get off YouTube, and, you know. Um, if you like put a link at the end of your video, people probably won't go to it. If you say www.link, 
they're like, okay, cool, and they'll just walk away. But if you actually have the web page, web page pop up, or you give them a box to type in a tweet so they can tweet it, um, or something like that, where it's like right there for them, it's so much more tangible for them to grab onto it. Um, or like for our projects, um, for the project that I worked with, it's called Creative Growth, and it's about an art center in Oakland for developmentally challenged um, artists. And so they use it as a way to express themselves. So we made it personal by giving a little survey. So you answer these questions, um, and you put in things like, what do you find beautiful, or what character really represents you. And those searches actually go into Flickr and pull these images and insert them into the video. So as you're watching the video, these images pop up, and they have something to do with who you are as a person personally. And so they become very like um, catered to who you are. And as you're watching them, it's like, oh, cool. I love Harry Potter. It just popped up on the screen. Yeah. I completely identify with that. Um, so it makes it a more personal and engaging experience for them. Um, well, at first, I didn't understand any of that at all. Like, I'm not a coder at all. I, I, don't, I barely know what HTML is. I know how to, like, copy-paste text, and that's about it, um, which was helpful. But, um, but yeah, when we were really doing, when we were conceptualizing these projects, it was really difficult at the beginning because we knew what web native wasn't. We knew that it, we knew that it, and we knew that it had to be interactive, and we knew it had to be engaging. But unfortunately, like because this medium is so new, like there weren't really any examples that we could draw from. There were like we had a few like high like the High Rise Project and um, the Arcade Fire music video Wilderness Downtown. Like those were two examples that we had as like for what web native filmmaking was but we were still like wait but but they but everyone kept telling us that's not real web native yeah. and so it was like oh if this isn't real what is and yeah. so um, so it took a really long time to kind of like wrap our heads around like what is what is web native and what isn't yeah cuz we're filmmakers and we we've developed over the years a language for film we know exactly what to do we know there's like different steps how yeah. to write a script, how to write a storyline, all of that. We yeah. know how to make films. We know how to hypnotize people exactly. into enjoying our Into films. sitting there and yeah. liking our films. So when we were approached with this project, uh, we had to rethink the way that we looked at films because we couldn't just do what we always do. And we didn't want to just do all, what we always did. We didn't want to sit there and make a film and then like throw a Google map in there just because, you know. Um, we had to make our film um, specifically so that they could be web native um, and keep that always in our mind. So you have to learn a whole new grammar, really. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, and it's still, we're still learning how to think like that. We're still learning how to speak that language because it's still a very new thing that yeah. isn't um, prevalent and it's still very new to us. So even though maybe yeah. we were like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I mean like eventually we all came, we, yeah, yeah. each group, we, I was in a separate group from Stephanie, but um, we, um, Eventually, we all came up with a concept that was, um, you know, at its, at its, you know, at its core, web native and something that was interactive. Um, so yeah, and so I think a lot of it was just like, okay, what can what's already on the web that we can incorporate into our projects? And I think that was um, that was kind of the turning point when we realized that it was kind of like, oh, we can do this and this and this, and it's now only a question of. Does it make sense for our project, or is it actually cap like are we capable of doing? Yeah, because the beautiful thing about web native is that the world there's all this information on the internet, and we can just put that into our videos in a way that the world all this information is constantly being updated, it's constantly growing and evolving, and we can put that into our films. Um, so in that way, they shape our films very much. Yeah.